Good afternoon. Welcome to our Lady of Lake Church. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. <laughs> Oh, 
shall exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation of our sins, and not of our sins only, but of those of the whole world. 
This way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. According to Luke, glory, glory to you, o Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as I said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance or forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, uh, during this Easter season, we read stories of how Jesus appeared to his followers to assure them that he had risen from the dead. In the Gospel for today, he appears to his disciples who are huddled in the upper room, not daring to go out. The room was full of bitter, sweet memories. It was here that Jesus washed their feet and celebrated the Last Supper with them. 
It was here that they promised their loyalty to him, but it was short-lived. One denied him, another betrayed him, and all but one fled, leaving him alone. Now suddenly, he's among them. They didn't go to him. He came to them. He offered words of peace, but they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He assured them that he wasn't a spirit or a ghost. A ghost, he said, doesn't have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And they could see his wounds and his hands and feet and side. And yet his glorified body possessed new properties. It was no longer subject to the ordinary laws of nature. Sometimes I ask myself, what will our bodies be like in heaven? The idea of us being like angels sitting on a cloud playing a harp is not a very satisfying image. At times we have the idea that we'll be spiritual creatures floating somewhere in the halls of heaven. But Jesus shatters that image today. True, in his glorified body, he came through the wall and stood among them. But he assures them that he's not a ghost. It's something to keep in mind when we think about our glorified bodies. But what is most beautiful about our gospel is that Jesus doesn't blame them or scold them for failing him. Instead, he extends to them his peace and their hearts are filled with joy. During this Easter season, our hearts too are filled with joy because the risen Lord is among us. True, we have our questions and our doubts. Why is human life so filled with problems and difficulties? Why is there so much suffering? Jesus himself asks the question in the Gospel today, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? And God's answer to these and to so many questions like them is Easter. One of the things I like about Easter is that it gives us so much hope. Its message is powerful. Love is stronger than death. The final word is not death, but life. To be a follower of Jesus, the risen one, means that we are to be people who spread the message of hope wherever we can. But how do we keep that hope alive? Jesus tells us by asking his disciples a seemingly odd question, have you anything to eat? And then we remember, meals are where Jesus did most of his teaching. Meals are where he healed. Meals are where he showed mercy, where he washed and kissed the feet of sinners. And he meets us here today as we gather for a meal in the Eucharist. It is here that we receive the food that nourishes us and gives us the energy that will renew our sense of purpose to return to our lives and to be his witnesses. In so many ways, the risen Christ is in our midst, present in the love, the charity, and the goodness of others, in the sacrament of his body and blood, in moments of grace and prayer. Sometimes we don't realize it. May our Easter celebration open our hearts and spirits to recognize Christ among us in every season of our lives.
in the place of our creed, we now renew our baptismal promises. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is completed, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, and restored in us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we are blessed with the Easter walk. bring our prayers and needs before the Lord. Our response this evening is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, may she increase in grace and holiness during this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that God bless their efforts to work for the betterment of all who may serve. Let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude for doctors and scientists who have provided us with the COVID-19 vaccine and making it available to us, let us pray to the Lord. For the young people in our parish who are preparing for confirmation and first Eucharist, may they come to a deeper appreciation presence of God in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. We the Lord our for the sick and those who have asked us to pray for them, especially Heidi Schneider, Elaine Christzak, Philip Sherman, Joy Lyriola, that they may be blessed with good health. Let us pray to the Lord. We the Lord our for our faithful departed especially Thomas S. Adams, Robert Austin, and Anne Haran Lindsay. May they soon rest with all the angels and saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. We now include our personal needs and intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, listen to our prayers and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
is that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given the cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of all, to honor you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising we toward our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we 
celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and Arthur, our retired Bishop, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For him and with him and in me, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the need to enter under my roof. The Holy Savior, I saw it to 
body and blood of Christ. Keep us safe.
to be very short this evening. Reverend Brown Jr.'s Girl Scout Troop 97201 will be selling Girl Scout cookies before and after Masses next Sunday. Please see the bulletin for more information.